So front end limiters are one of those things that I did not run forever. Um, I think I made it down to like 530s, mid 550s maybe, say pretty easy, um, without having to run them. I controlled, I, I depended on the strut to completely control uh, the front end of the car. Um, of course, everybody back in the day, 9010s from Lakewood were, were your hot thing. So it allows the front end to rise real quickly. All that stored energy in your front springs is going to allow it to jump up real fast. So the goal is, is as it's rising, it goes. And then when the front wheels come back down, if they, if they come off the ground, it doesn't allow it to unload the back. It keeps the front end up. And you see this a lot of times. You still see it on cars. You know, they take off. They squat real bad in the back. The front end comes up and it stays up nose high down the entire track. So that type of setup, I mean, that's really good for bracket cars or cars that are not making a tremendous amount of power. Um, but, you know, in th once you get faster, you've got to really start um, having a good shock to be able to control the front end. And, and even with a good shock that can, can completely control the front end rising, you've still got to be able to, to stop. You've got to limit the front end separation. No, it just comes up too fast, it doesn't stop, and then it's got the stored energy from the springs, from the front cool springs, and it just pushes the nose on up, and it's just, that's a bad deal. At some point, as your car progresses, and it gets faster and faster, you're gonna get to a spot where your car is gonna start wheeling in little teeny wheelies, and then it's gonna start doing 30-foot wheelies, and then 60-foot wheelies, and then before you know it, it's gonna be on the bumper, slamming down, tearing up headers, um, destroying the car. That's when you need travel limiters. So you really want to put the limiter on it just so that you can prevent the front end from flaring up real high. So it's pretty easy, uh, pretty simple. To, to set limiters up. There are some really high-end front-end limiters. Um, there's some real basic ones. I'm gonna show you my basic ones. Um, I built these 12 years ago, I think. Um, it's been a long time ago. Pete Harold with HED. I saw him make a video on how to make these and I built them and I built them out of log chain. Um, so they're pretty heavy duty and they've been on the car forever. Uh, not really had any issues with them. I'll show you some examples of some of the other ones. Uh, some people use a whole bunch of different methods out there. Some are cheap. Uh, some of them you can do it for less than 10 bucks. Uh, some of them are six, seven hundred dollars It completely depends on, you know, what you get. These are really nice racecraft travel limiters. These are fully adjustable from the engine bay. You never have to lay on the ground or jack up the car to adjust. You adjust it from this knob and pulling it up tells you how much travel you have. This is a nice set of travel limiters as well. The body is slotted and there are holes spaced every half inch. Take a clicker type clevis pin or a bolt and nut and select the hole you want to put it in. The higher you put the nut or bolt or clevis pin, the more travel you have. And the lower you put it, the less travel you have. Real quick and easy adjustments. My car, um, these are homemade. And they just go through the control arm. And I just do it by the amount of nuts that's on the top. And you can see the, the chain is just heavy duty lock chain. It's probably a little overkill that strength of chain, but just welded it to the frame up there. And then I come down here and I, I loosen it up. So this is how much travel it has now for the front end. That's about two, two and a half inches um, when it's going down track. So we're going to take it down to basically both of those nuts that are on top of the control arm now. I'm going to take those off and then it'll reduce travel to about three quarters of an inch. So here's the um, lengths I just changed it. I moved those nuts that were on top to the bottom. So now you can see it's on the control arm. You can see it's got a lot less slack. So this is about three quarters of an inch when it translates out to the wheel. It's not that much on the chain, but it's not all the way at the end. 
So it's down in there. A double A arm on a older Nova. And you can see it's got a jack screw in it. And basically the screw, it goes down and hits the frame of the, the car. And then, so how far that is screwed down determines how much front end travel you can have. So one key thing to, to keep in mind is when the front is fully extended and the front wheels are barely on the ground, the back tires are gonna have the best opportunity to stay hooked to the track. Um, all the weights on the back tires. So setting the limiters up, if, if you set them too tight in the front, what's gonna happen is the front end is gonna come up and it's gonna try to separate. There's gonna be no energy. And so it, it could knock the tires off. A lot of times when you see cars, the front end's tied too tight. They only have a half inch or less. Some people don't have no travel. And then all of a sudden the, the car, they let go of the trans brake button, instant tire speed, instant spin. So that's a, that's a bad thing. If the front end is too loose, like I was saying earlier, I mean, it's very possible that it's just going to go into a wheelie. So there's a, you got to find a happy medium. Um, you know, you got to experiment, you got to make passes. Uh, track conditions make a big difference on, you know, what the car is going to need. If the track is really sticky, then you can usually tie it down and throw the power at it. Track that is not prepped quite so good, then you're going to want to uh, have some travel in the front and it's going so to help. It's really uh, complicated is when you're adjusting it, when you start playing with it, when you're, when you're dealing with the, the, the front end limiters and you think you've got a good spot. So you take off the front end, separates, reaches max extension, hits the limiter, and then the tires are planted and it goes. And, but if you don't have enough power in the car, if there's not enough power to keep it on the back tire at that point, then one of two things is gonna happen. It's gonna go down the track, or more than likely, it's going to, front end's gonna come back down, and now the, all the weight that was on the back tires is gonna start getting distributed back to the front tires. So then what's gonna happen is it's gonna unload, and it's gonna spin. So in that situation, you have one or two things you can do. Either put a little bit more travel in the car so that it'll, it'll the power you have, the power you're, you're putting to the car, it will plant and, and stay going and stay accelerating. Or you can leave the front end alone at that point, at that, that, that travel distance that you have. And when it's there, then you apply more power so the power keeps the front front tires up or keeps it so that it doesn't settle back down so rapidly. Now, modern shocks are playing a, a huge role in the way limiters are, are interacting now. And so when you have a good shock, when the shock can can control how how quickly the front end is rising, I mean, you, be, you may be able to have three or four inches of travel in the front. There's a bunch of cars out there that are on drag radials. And if you'll look at them, you know, we talked about anti-squat, you know, previously. The back comes up and the front comes up another three or four inches. They come up together. It looks like a four-wheel drive going down the track. So those cars, they have really good struts on the front, and the struts are able to control the front suspension. So it's very slow in letting it come up, and those are really good. So a funny story. One of the first experiences I ever had with front struts, uh, I don't remember how fast the car was. It wasn't super fast but I had regular old struts on the front and it run good and it would carry just a little teeny wheelie. And so I got the bright idea. I don't know who I got it from. Someone told me, I'm sure at the track that a poor man's 9010, well, it wasn't really a 9010. It was a, a, a zero zero was a drill bit on the front strut. I'm sure I'm not the only one that's done it. Um, so I drilled that bad boy out, got all the fluid out of it and it was very springy. And so the next time at the track, I let go of the button and it done a monster wheel stand. It flew straight up. It scared me to death. So another thing that makes a difference 
in your, your front travel limiters and your shocks is the spring rate on your front coil springs. So we know those things, they all have spring rates on them. 100, 150, 175, 200, 300, 350. There's some great big numbers out there. So if you have a car that works really well and the suspension is set up good and you only race really tight tracks, you don't need but a half inch of travel or, or less. Sometimes you tie it down completely. Um, you know, the, you may be a, a, a good candidate for a very heavy spring. So the lighter the spring rate is, the more it's going to compress, the more stored energy it's going to have. 150 pound spring on it, and it's a, say a 14 inches long, and your front end weighs 2,000 pounds, it's going to compress significantly more than if you had a spring that was a 300 pound spring on it. Heavier spring is not going to collapse and store the energy. So it does not fling the, the car up. So front end travel limiters, coil spring rate, and shocks all play a role in, in how you're going to set these, these things up in the front. But ultimately, you got to be at the track, you got to be making passes, and you got to be testing the vehicle. You got to be testing it. Um, what does it do when I have more travel? Um, looking at video, getting video of the car when it's taken off is crucial. Um, the human eye just cannot keep up with everything that's happening. Get video. That's one of the best kept secrets in drag racing. Um, starting to see it a lot more where people are taking the video, but uh, you wanna get video. You gotta get good quality video so you can review it as part of your data. Um, it makes a huge difference on trying to decide what you need to do, when it spun and why it spun. And suspension travel, those front end limiters are one of those things that, you know, you have to play with sometime from round to round if the track gets a lot better um, or gets a lot worse if it gets slicker. So just, you know, stay on your, your, your toes, stay aware of what the track is doing. You want to be able to make quick changes um, if you can. Uh, you know, my limiters are set up where, I mean, I just can't do it quickly. So I have to make the call before I go to the, to the, uh, to the staging lanes. But um, I'm gonna get some better ones here soon, so hopefully I'll be able to, you know, make some quick changes, quick adjustments, um, if it's uh, needed in the staging lanes. Now that's not saying I don't have a wrench in the golf cart, and I'll crawl my happy ass right up under there and uh, change some, some travel limiters and settings in a flat second in the staging lanes with two cars in front of me in my driving suit. Done it. We'll do it again probably, I'm sure. <laughs> Um, hopefully I can give you some helpful information from time to time, maybe stuff you already know, but you know, you might, uh, potentially catch a secret or two here and there since I like to share secrets apparently. But if y'all have any comments or questions, uh, ask them. I'll do my best to answer with my opinion and, uh, like, and subscribe if you have not already and please share this. Appreciate it. Thanks.